Fine Wine and Once, a Once Upon a Time podcast. I'm Lo. And I'm Dee. Welcome to the most terrible, awful, bad time. <laughs> so for those of you just tuning in, first of all, welcome. Second of all, we are sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but this, this is, as Lo said, a Once Upon a Time podcast. We are going through episode by episode, talking through plot points, plot holes, plot questions, everything, all of the above. We're going through spoilers. We're going through things that should have happened, didn't happen, we wish had never been uttered, <laughs> all of the above. It's a, it's a wild time. It's not fun. No, but important to know, we have been watching this show for 10 years since we were in college. Mm-hmm. Um, this mm-hmm. show is probably what made us friends, which is disgusting. And <laughs> Oh, I don't like that. On top of that, um, as we've said, we've been watching for 10 years. We've seen every episode, some more than once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are speaking with a hazy recollection of the full series. We've seen them many times. Some of those episodes I may have never seen sober. That's fair. There was a lot of wine at those wine, wine, and once parties. Back I like how you just day. called them wine, wine, and once part. I guess they kind of were. They we didn't absolutely about- were. We were whining with wine. We were whining about school. That's true. And then we, we were with- oncing. You know what? That's accurate. <laughs> that, I, that came first. The, the wine, the, the once watch parties with wine were essentially wine, wine, and once. Exactly. And then by the time we kicked everybody else out, they were wine, wine, and once. It's true. By kicked out, we mean that people no longer want to watch with <laughs> And in their defense, they were right. Mm-hmm. We also don't want to watch with us, but here we are. But that being said, spoilers ahoy, we will mm-hmm. be speaking with impunity about the entire series. Now, some of our recollections may be fuzzy, hazy, and or just straight up wrong, but... We are never wrong. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. Did we not just have a whole conversation <laughs> about how Regina and David made out? Which I'm they still did. I not don't entirely certain didn't Someone, happen. It happened. It had to have it, happened. Why do we both have this recollection? I don't know. Maybe we wanted to manifest it? I don't Or I don't know. we are living in an alternate timeline. Maybe. Maybe something deep and terrible has opened up with the time stone and... <laughs> Cap, yep. put it back, damn it. <laughs> Please. I don't want to be here anymore. I want, like, <laughs> off the ride. Either way, spoilers. Spoilers are here, yeah. friends. There will be spoilers. spoilers. That may or... Some of these spoilers happened. Some of them did not. So. It'll be a fun guessing game. <laughs> Precisely. Boy, I can't wait till they introduce Thanos in season seven. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> also, I in... just need to be clear. My entire mispronunciation of the word Thanos. Nope, still can't say it. No. Is Haley Atwell's fault because I that's heard fair. her saying what it's like Thanos one time and that's, now that's all I say. So that's fair. You know what? I think you're valid. I think and I like I'm that valid for you. too. Thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? What's new? What's like what is what's life? That's what I said. What's life? What's, life? what's new? What's spicy? Nothing spicy. My grandmother's having surgery on her eye today. I We've had no. this conversation. We did. I still don't like it, but um, continue. Make sure y'all go to the eye doctor. Not that she didn't go to the eye doctor. She has been. But just, you know, just as a heads up, you can get tears in your eyeballs. Mm. Don't like it. She's fine. Mm-mm. She did well. She's doing great. She's recovering. Everything's fine. Yay. Yay. Um, But I did not, not much. How are you? Nice. How am I? I think I'm good. I keep saying that. This is not a good response. No, I am good. I'm coming up on a few busy weekends, which is less than fun, but, you know. Fun stuff, good. but doesn't mean that it, right. the, I, I, the commitment is fun. Right. And I keep telling myself, you know what? This is better than two years ago when I had nothing to do because everything was completely shut down. So it's... Exactly. You know, it's be- so it's better. Exactly. So, you know. But I, I am cheating this week. I'm having a margarita. It's in a, it is in a stemless wine glass, though, so I think it helps. So it counts. But the, the reason I'm having a margarita is because I bought, or not bought, I was given a 
strawberry margarita infusion kit. And what this strawberry margarita infusion thing told me to do was add tequila, wait 24 hours, pour, and serve. Mm -hmm. All we added was tequila. There was no <laughs> margarita mix, no sweet and sour. It's tequila and powder and dehydrated strawberries. Uh, we, we did eventually deduce after pouring it and realizing, hey, this is tequila, that we were supposed to add something else. But nowhere on the bottle did it tell me to do that. But so needless to say, now it's their fault. Right. But now I have a whole bottle of strawberry tequila to go through. So And it says it, use it within two weeks. So I guess. Great. So you're going to have a lot of tequila. <laughs> uh, it, yep. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we, I, I, we got nicer tequila. That's good. So it's good tequila. Oh. It is, but I don't really, I'm not a strawberry margarita person, so we're just pushing through. You know, soldiering on. I do have a umbrella in my drink. Which so is a little bit better. so important. Fortunately, I did bring the wine this week. Thank Christ, I was hoping. I, I have some Chardonnay as Ooh. for the huge. That's the, pro it's so fucking hot right now, and it I wanted is. a, oh my gosh. Like a, I'm almost to the point, it's warm enough here that I'm like, should I have, like, gone for the Pinot Grigio? Like, fair. that being said, what? that's and just water. That's it is. flavored water. But It is. No, seriously, and that's the reason I didn't plan ahead, so I had no whites in the fridge. I'm like, no, no, it's warm. I need something that's going to be iced. Yeah. So. It is. It's toasty out Steamy. here. See? Just like this episode. I, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but this episode is. It's very steamy. It's something. I don't know it's what it is. It's episode 21 is what it is. That is weird. That's weird. Is that the I guess we should start talking say? about, was like, we're. weird? <laughs> what? Was that what you were going to say is weird? Yeah, no, I was, it, the fact that we have one episode left of this season is really weird. That is really weird. That is deeply weird. And deeply concerning. Where did right. the, where did, time where did the go. time go? I don't know, it was September a minute ago. Remember when we were convinced the show came out in September and then we were like, oh, it came out in October? Yeah, that's, that's quite upsetting. You know what I realized? It mm -hmm. was as we were having this conversation today, earlier... Where, as we were watching, you kind of just kept pointing out that Emma is 28. <laughs> and I just had this realization because of when we started thinking about the show and, like, recording. Yeah. I realized, I was like, oh. You are Emma. No, be because in my brain I was like, oh, like, Emma and I are the same age. But I turned 29 while we were recording. Right. She's She's a baby. So, like, just that that was weird to me because all of a sudden I was like, wait, no, mm -hmm. I'm just younger than I am suddenly. When did I, that happen? It happened on my birthday, everyone. It happened on my birthday. It's more upsetting because we started watching this when we were, like, 18, 19-ish. Probably 19, I think, probably, when it came out. Mm -hmm. When one. she was, like, supposed to have her life together or something? And, but I remember sitting there going, well, she's a decade older than me. Makes sense that feels right mm -hmm. and now i'm just like we were bamboozled uh, what who on earth now i'm looking at this 28 year old being told you're the savior and i'm like run run girl get out of <laughs> every, here every breakdown she has saying she doesn't want to do this i'm like yeah same correct <laughs> correct same absolutely kid. valid good luck insane just hot yeah. nonsense all right I have the Disney Plus summary pulled Great. up. This is season one, episode 21, An Apple Red as Blood. Mm -hmm. Cool. As Henry begs Emma to stay in Storybrooke, Regina works on a plot that could rid her of Emma permanently. Snow White asks her cohorts to help save Prince Charming and defeat the evil queen. Technically correct. Yeah. Nothing lying. No, no lies here. No... Uh, right. Just nope. straight up ignoring what actually happens in the plot. Right. These are all plot points, but I would not call this the plot of this episode. Very true. Which is weird. Yes. But I guess if we're really tra talking about the 
plot of the episode. The plot of the episode is... Emma is Regina. almost poisoned by Regina, but then Henry... Henry is instead. Is instead, yeah. <laughs> also, finally, Snow White eats the apple and also is poisoned. Yes, we get the iconic Snow White moment of eating the apple. Oh, I thought you were going to see the iconic moment where she eats the apple and then Ruby is there after having eaten someone. Oh, well, no, that happened before. The <laughs> oh, red. The eating of the that. apple, so. God. In case anyone has forgotten, Red ate her boyfriend. A hundred percent. Also, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Oh, shit, yeah. You know, find us on uh, Instagram at Wine, Wine, and Once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Find us at Gmail. Write us at Wine, Wine, and Once at gmail.com. Um, yep. And you do not need to say anything. Just send us Red and her boyfriend. Oh, my God. I forgot to tell you, uh, our our returning pal McKenna did email us oh! a bunch of pictures that Red ate her boyfriend and it was pictures of all of Jefferson doors. I keep forgetting to tell you. <gasps> oh, it's so very excited. fun. <laughs> and also Red ate her Red boyfriend. Red ate her boyfriend. <laughs> and I love that for us. What is, what is I hate it for us, but I love that our, our requests are being... <laughs> Thank received. you for the Jefferson doors, McKenna. <laughs> but also, reading her boyfriend. Yes. I'll, I'll post them. When we go on hiatus, I'll post these because the question we have are, is it like a nightmare before Christmas situation where each door is a different realm? Because there's no indicator. Yeah. Curious. So we'll, th- we'll throw it out there at some point. And they, I, I would like to argue it absolutely should have been just a room full of nightmare before Christmas doors. And you should have done been in, able to suss out simple. where they're from. Done and simple. Ridiculous. Is that money that they didn't need to spend for a throwaway shot? Yes. Do I want it to have happened? Also, yes. Exactly. Precisely. All right. Well, well, are you ready? No, but, you know. That's fair. We're jumping in anyway. Cheers. We do what we must. <laughs> <laughs> to doing what we must. Mm-hmm. It's like, would you... That feels like what Regina is saying this whole episode. Well, to do, doing what I must. You know, I was going to say, as Mary Poppins would say, if I must, I must. That also feels like something Regina has said. Oh, absolutely. Are we not- Slowly making an apple turnover. If I must, if I, I must. If I must, I must. So, let's hop on in to an apple red as blood. Side note. Always just going to hear Sondheim for that title. That's fair. Is there an that apple red, red as blood? Is... It, no. No. But I'm going to hear it. An apple is red as blood? No. Pretty sure that's it now. Yeah. It's not a cape. It's an apple. Yep. Slippers Fucking pure gold. <laughs> it's not a cape. It's an apple. Fucking <laughs> It's not a cape. It's an apple. <laughs> Fucking ignorant. We're off to a good right. start. Okay, great. All right. The apple is red as blood. The slipper is pure as gold. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping now. Stopping with the song time. Into the once upon a time. Oh. It was a nice rhyme. It, it was. Ooh. I appreciate it. Rhyme continued it. <laughs> this is a disaster. It I can't is. wait. Okay. So... We open on this scene, and we are in Regina's little mansion, you know. She's sitting, having dinner with Henry. They are either either eating beef carpaccio, or they are having (laughs) the most rare steak in the world. And the doorbell rings. They're doing this weird, like, staring at each other across the table and, like, making faces at each other. But not, like, fun faces, like, I'm suspicious of you faces. Mm-hmm. The doorbell rings. Regina goes and opens the door. It's Emma. <laughs> That's a nightmare in itself. <laughs> Absolutely a nightmare. And <laughs> then on top of that, she like is very upset to see her uh, see Emma, and she like turns around and like turns back, and then Emma's like, "It's all of us, and it's all the people of Storybook. <laughs> They're lit from below. They're very scary looking." Because this is a nightmare that Regina is having. Oh. <laughs> this is not actually occurring. Although we are meant to hold on to this thought that it is true. A thing. 
and a thing as she turns back around and looks and Henry is standing out in the stairs and he has what could it, it's a <laughs> coil of rope but it is sure arranged to look like a noose it's a noose it's a noose it it looks like a noose it's not quite but it is definitely just like artfully arranged to evoke a noose right you know not upsetting at all it's fine he's nine it, or ten i don't he's ten he's it's fine ten Regina is then tied to her apple tree, which is now in the middle of the main street of Storybrooke. And, you know, she is trying to reason with them, tell them to stop. And they're like, you took away our happy endings. You stole our love stories. Jiminy Cricket's like, I don't even, my conscience is clear. This is, this is totally willing. Fuck you. Fuck you. Emma reaches up and she pulls down an apple and it's black goo. It's really upsetting. I uh, imagine. I I feel for Mm-mm. J-Mo in this. Having I, I, the tactile sensation. Was, mm-hmm. No. So I was just going to say. Yeah. Blech. Uh-uh. In any case, Bridget is very upset and then Re- Emma picks up a sword and swings it at her. Uh- and Emma, or Regina wakes up in her bed in her fabulous silk pajamas. It was all a nightmare. They're good pajamas. I would like to be a, like a silk pajama person. I really would. I'm just not put together enough to make silk pajamas happen. No. It's very exciting. I wish I were. I 100% wish I was. Oh, well. Regina wakes up. She goes, and it's, we're moving on. Emma is with Henry, because as you will recall from last episode, Emma has kidnapped Henry. She straight up kidnapped him. Just, what a choice. Straight kidnap. This is, this is full kidnap. Not good. You know. And Henry is coming to the realization that I'm being kidnapped, and we're leaving now. I don't know why it takes him so long. Like, he, she says, get in the car, we're leaving. And it, it's implied they've been sitting for a while, and he's like, so where are we going? Well, you know. To Granny's Diner, kid. I don't know. Yeah, we're going to go get a milkshake at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. Henry is like, we cannot leave. And she is like, we are leaving. And Henry's like, you can't leave. You're the savior. You have to save everybody. And Emma says, I only want to save you. I don't care about anybody else. I want to save you. Mm -hmm. Henry gets very upset and like a maniac, grabs the steering wheel and (laughs) yates them out the road. He's a sociopath. You know, it's fine. He achieves his end because now they can't go anywhere. Good for them. He succeeded. Emma is upset about this, but, you know, Henry's like, please stay. You need to stay. I, You have to stay. You have to save everybody. You have to bring back the happy endings. <laughs> I was going to say it. happy ends, and it felt <laughs> So, whatever. She's got to stay. She's got to break the curse. And Emma's like, my God, my car doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Drove he fucking around. broke my car. <laughs> Kid, you ruined my vehicle. No, dude, you broke my car. <laughs> That's the name of the sequel, actually. Oh, fun not, fact. First, not really. the dude loses his car, then it's, dude, he broke, broke my car. car. Uh huh. <laughs> Back in the Enchanted Forest, Charming is captured and he is about to be put in the guillotine by King now, George. I have more to say, but I can only assume this means his mother's dead, right? One can only assume. Fantastic. Charming is in the guillotine. He's ready to be beheaded. Regina arrives. <laughs> and it is That's an the arrival best way to... with a capital A. Like, she, it, her attire is a choice. Yes. It is, it's intense. It's high evil queen and then there's like a lot the of pink coverage. Pink undershirt. Yeah. Like bedazzled. Yeah. So she's wearing a dickie underneath her dress. Right, but they should have just made the dickie out of the, like, embroidery pieces and not right. with the whatever they overlaid it, it on. It looks like a 
fourth graders tap dance recital outfit. <laughs> like the underpiece does. Yeah. Especially given that, like, it does not seem to have been made to form fit to... No, it gets a little bunched up and baggy. Yeah. And let's be clear... She has the assets to fill it out. Right. Like, there was no need to cover it. Thank you. No. We prefer if it... <laughs> no. We all would. So true. So true, bestie. <laughs> In any case... King George is like, you are about to be beheaded for walking out on Abigail. Never mind that, that she has a true love who is not gold anymore. I love that. Brother. I am beheading you. And then Regina appears and is like, no, that blade is water. And water dumps all over Charming's head. And it's delightful. She says that. It's weird. <laughs> she offers George all of the riches that like Midas would have granted her. So long uh -huh. as... He hands over Charming. Then Seems she promises fair. he will suffer. And George is like, I'm listening, but also how will he suffer? And Regina would... says, I'm going to make him catch Snow White. Essentially, he's going to be my bait. He's going to get to Snow White. Now, again, I will be saying more later, but it's important for me that everyone remembers this is George's son. Everyone knows that this is his son. Mm -hmm. Or thinks it's, very it's his weird. son. Y yes. For all intents and purposes, this is James. Correct. That is all I will say. Proceed. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where you're going with that. <laughs> In any case, King George is like, proceed. Yeah, that seems fair. Good. All right. You take him. Yeet him out. Great. We flash back over to Storybrooke. Regina is staring out of the window, out of the smaller pane of the window, just randomly. Well, sure. She realizes that her apple tree, her prized apple tree, oh, is no. ailing. It is diseased. Oh. And so, obviously, the way to solve this problem is to go and growl at, rum or at gold in his shop mm. and be like, the curse is failing. I thought you were going to say, you know, the solution is to make sure you're not overwatering or underwatering. Oh, see, I thought you thought I was going to think that I was going to say, obviously, the, the solution is to go bone gold. <laughs> I'll also that. <laughs> no, he already, they already tried that. It didn't work for them. She's a Mills woman. That is the solution to everything. <laughs> Oof. Oof. The fact that that is a three for three statement. <laughs> You called it a three for three statement. Am I incorrect? No, you are entirely correct. And that's what's upsetting about that. Yeah, it's not good. Okay. Anyway, no, we're going to go hmm. growl at gold. That, hey, the curse is failing. And she tries to strike a bargain. She tries to get gold hmm. to, you know, strengthen the curse or something doesn't really seem to care no he's really actually quite um unworried about it yeah very nonchalant yeah and regina realizes you want this curse to break weird hmm. it's almost like he's had a different plan All along. from the beginning <laughs> weird so she looks at him and says you want the curse to break. And he's like, mm? Maybe I do. And she goes, why do you want the curse to break? And he's like, I'm not telling. Like, fuck off. If I haven't told you yet, this why globe. would I? There's so much globe spinning in this episode. Truly. Rumpel basically is like, I'm not helping you. I want the curse to break. Also, you might want to consider leaving town. Because, like, once people get their new memories back, they're going to be out for blood. Yours, Yours, specifically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Regina goes to the school, and we see her stick a card on a bike. Now, this would be very upsetting <laughs> to us 
as viewers if we did not realize that this bike belongs to Paige. Right. Paige being Jefferson's daughter. Paige being Grace. Yes. Who is Jefferson's daughter. Thankfully, her bike has a little license plate on it that says Paige. Thank God. (laughs) So we're not just sticking cards on random children's bicycles. No. No. Specific children. Specific children. (laughs) We seek out the child we would like to (laughs) stick a card on. So that feels better. We're going to leave Regina and that little plan right over there at Storybook Prep. <laughs> flash on over to Mary Margaret's apartment, who is not, Mary Margaret, not at work. No. Children she are at school. Work. She's not at work. Um, even though I she's been like welcome back that. to her teaching position. Yes. As represented by the, we're so glad you didn't kill that lady. Right. And the fact that Regina was like, I'm going to have Henry move to a different classroom. Yeah. Not yours. Go fuck yourself. Right. So the children are at school, but not She's Mary not. Margaret. Which, fine. Take your days, girl. But like, I was going to say, self-care. Live <laughs> your dream. <laughs> but she is at home and Emma gets back. And Mary Margaret pulls what could only be described as perhaps the most passive aggression Ooh. of all time. That's every level of passive aggressive. Mm-hmm. She's scrubbing a dish like she is upset. She's like, oh, you left. Mm. Hmm. What'd you think? Hmm. Mm. Well, hmm. Mm. Shocking. And, uh, excuse me, you told me to stay. You told me to stay and fight, and um, what did you not do? Stay and fight. You just decided you were going to, like, leave. Also, Run that's away. abduction. What you've done is abduction. That's my favorite. She goes, you have abducted him. Oh, she so you called abdu- it out. And I appreciated that because nobody else in this episode did. Nope. So I do appreciate that at least one person on the side of good was, like. That was kidnapping. You kidnapped a child, ma'am. That's bad. You should not do that. Yeah. She also says this whole thing, like, you're regressing. You're becoming who you were before you came here. Yeah. It's very, it's weird only because she didn't know Emma before she got arrived. There. Yeah. And also, Emma has been nothing but kind and maybe a little closed off, but, like, on the whole. Right. Pretty, pretty friendly to Mary Margaret. So. Mm -hmm. She also helped you, you know, like, not get arrested for murder Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or, like, tried for murder. Yeah. But no, no. She's pissed. She's big mad. She's big mad, which I guess fair. Your friend kidnapped a child. So. See, that's where, that should be where she's upset. Yeah. Not just the you left. We were supposed to be a family. It should be, well, you kidnapped someone. Right. One of my students. Right. Like. And. Technically, I should be calling CPS on you right now. Like, yeah. Yeah. But. Not a, not a cute look. No. Emma gets upset back and is like, I don't want people to depend on me. Because that's <laughs> what Mary Margaret's focusing on. And she's like, I don't want people to depend on me. I just want to be with my son also i abducted him so it's better and mary margaret's like you don't want people to depend on you but you want henry who will depend on you you dumb shit like she is a dumb shit (laughs) she is the dumbest shit so mary margaret's like do not be the person you are from before life on the run is bad for henry and for everybody and also, now you just have to do what's right for him. Do right. what's good for your son. Side question, is she still paying rent on her massive apartment that we see in episode one? One cannot know. I, I, okay. Well, because there's that one, I think it's episode two, she's like unpacking things. So mm-hmm. it's the implication that she left. But if she left, then the implication is that she's allowed to leave fucking Storybrooke, which we were proven the episode before when August drives out with her but again the rules are fucking hazy at best i hate it 100 percent. 
we flash over to Storybrook. Or no, we flash over to the Enchanted Forest. Uh Aha. The barrier is becoming thinner. It's hard to tell the difference. Fair enough. I'm going to retake that. (laughs) We flash over to the Enchanted Forest where Snow, the dwarves, Red, and Granny, but really just Granny, have gathered outside of a castle. And they are planning on infiltrating this castle. Mm -hmm. Red arrives... No, I... Uh, first of all, Grumpy, they're like, we, but we need help from the air. And Grumpy's like, I know a gal. Someone owes me a favor is what he says. He's really pissed off about it, so... Yeah, so it's Fine. a whole thing. And then Red appears from the bush, and Grumpy looks at her and says, You got someone on your face. Not not something. It's very important to me that everyone knows he does not say you have something on your face. No, no, no. Someone. Ready the stranger. <laughs> Ready the stranger, stranger, guys. <laughs> she, the fact that she's willing and okay and, True. I guess, happy to just turn into a wolf and eat people now is is it's, weird. Uh, it's a choice. Someone is not thinking about the implication of these lines. They're like, "Ha ha, that's clever," and you're like. Haha, <laughs> that's cannibalism. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's upsetting. Yeah. And she like laughs, but she smiles sheepishly, like, oh, <laughs> whoops. Excuse me, let me that's just treat wipe for my later. Face off. Sorry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> saving that for later. off my face. Hate it. She says, bad news, guys. The bad news is not that she had a stranger. The bad news no. is that. The queen is at this castle. The queen is coming. That's her castle. (laughs) Thank you, Sandra. Oh. And Snow says, it's a trap. And everybody's like, it's a trap. Very obviously a trap. Yes. And Snow says, well, you are welcome to back out. Because this is a trap. trap. But I am walking in. Yeah. I, I appreciate that she's calling out, it's a trap, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, no, 100%. And of course, all of her friends are like, absolutely not, we're walking into this trap with you. Fuck you. We are freeing, charming, let's go. Right. As they walk away, and this is important to me, this scene was really important to me on a rewatch, because okay. Red pulls her to the side and is like, what is the queen's deal with you? Oh, no. Like, why is she Talk so upset with you? Why Why is this all happening? And Snow says, I, ba- basically she says, I destroyed her happiness. Now she wants uh-huh. to take mine. Right. Well, you know, I will say this. I know you have more to say. I will say at least it's better than episode one where she goes, my I'm stepmom pretty. wants to kill me because I'm prettier than her. Right, which I wish they'd almost. I wish on they that. had stuck with that because of what where where I will later. be going later. But like, right, it would have been more of a moment, a gut punch. For snow. Mm-hmm. Proceed though. More but on that later. That is that's. It is an important moment only within. What we learn in this episode, it's confusing by the end. Yes. It's not confusing now. I feel it's important. You should write it down. Yes, correct. I do feel it's important and think you should write it down. So, as we will recall, Regina has uh, taken Charming hostage. Prisoner. Right. Not really hostage because nobody's looking for him. No. Um But she's taken him prisoner. He's in the one jail cell she owns. And... <laughs> true they have this weird little moment it's not reciprocated but she is absolutely trying to flirt with him he is like absolutely not fuck you was this the moment we thought they made out we don't know i don't know no because it was clearly on a dining room table we both it was agreed on in that. story rook <laughs> the story brook moment i swear to god i don't understand where i'm getting this from right. anyway 
Charming is in his bars and he's like, just kill me and leave Snow alone. And Regina is, of course, like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to kill Snow White. No. No, I have a different punishment in mind. And as Charming gets very upset, she walks away and flourishes an apple. Love it for her. I love the close-up magic of just, like, there's suddenly a red apple in her hand and she is cackling maniacally. Beautiful. It's fun for her. She's in a very, like, iconic evil queen look. She's got the crazy mm-hmm. hair, like the Ursula hair. Yes, but she has the collar. She does have the, the like, stand collar. Yep. Which, very iconic, like, evil queen. Yep. I like that we get that in this moment where she is really... She's Holding enacting the, apple, she... the true evil queen plan. Yep. The apple, the poison... We're here. We've arrived. We have arrived at the crux of the Snow White mythos. So. Mm -hmm. I like that for it. Again, wardrobing on this show, I feel like, does a really nice job. Wardrobe does a good job. All of the hair. Minus the fairies. Most of the time is like. (laughs) Hair, makeup, wardrobe, I think, usually does a good job. Yep. They get, I feel like somebody in creative control makes some weird calls on certain characters but Mm -hmm. on the whole they do a nice job of like evoking what we're meant to feel about this character in this moment i agree like you compare the regina of the stable boy to the regina in (sighs) this moment and they are not the same person Mm -mm. we know they're the same person because they're played by the same person but they're not the same but wildly different human beings Correct. And I appreciate that because it's shorthand. We can look at her and go, oh, no, this is not somebody we're meant to have empathy for right now. Right. We are meant to be absolutely against this person. Oh, yeah. So back in Storybrooke, Regina is continuing to look out the small pane in her window at her diseased tree. I don't like it. (laughs) She has a giant window right next to it. No, but she's got to look out the small pane at the diseased tree. Jefferson arrives at her office. It's midweek Sebastian Stan, everybody. How exciting. He's back. Praise be. He is about to join the Black Parade in his outfit. It is Sebastian Stan in perhaps one of his most Bucky Barnes moments on this This show. was his audition tape, right? Truly. <laughs> but my god does he pull it off. He's got the oh, liner, he's got the the chin he's oh got the clothes. It's just It's a good moment for it's everyone. A great moment. He arrives. He's received the card she left on Paige's bike. He's like, you know I watch is, her. I don't like that <laughs> sentence. No! It's a terrible sentence. But word for word, that's what he says. Regina wants his help. She pours them both a drink. This is really, right. this is not important to the plot at all, but it is really important to me that you go watch the scene and just watch the acting choices being made in the scene because they're having this conversation and they're eye to eye and Regina hands him a drink or tries to and he just like looks her dead in the eye and just <laughs> puts a playing card in the drink <laughs> and walks away. It's so... It's Beautiful. such a good Hatter moment of just, like, it's the absurdity of the Hatter, but then, like, the grittiness we need from this version. It's really nice. It is. He does not accept the drink. Regina wants his help. He says, Naturally. Um, How do you know I'm just not going to kill you? And she's like, you would have killed me in the last 28 years if you had it in you to kill me. And you haven't, so you're not going to kill me. Also, if you kill me, you'll never be reunited with your daughter. Love it. We love a manipulative, manipulative, jeez, let's try that again. <clears throat> we love a manipulative bitch. We really do. We absolutely do. She basically coerces him and is like, come help me out. I need your help one more time. I have your hat. Did you see your magic hat? 
You know, I've been trying to make hats for like 28 years. I have one right here. Look at your it's hat. right here. I have your hat. It's a I guess he hat. technically had it at one point. He fell into it. I don't know if it was the same hat. He may have just made his own that looked similar to it. I feel, I feel like it was meant to be a different hat that was made working by Emma being present. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> We're not litigating that episode anymore, no. but I am upset about it. That's fair. Is it because of the cartography? It is because of the cartography. <laughs> Does he, you know, practice cartography? I think it's a valid question. I do. I do, too. <laughs> Regina says, use your hat one more time. And he's like, it won't work. There's no magic. And right. she says, I have just like a little bit of magic stored. And I think it's tiny, enough tiny for bit. like one more trip. One more trip to the Treat. Enchanted Forest. I'm back. So we. A treat for later. Yeah. We just need to go find a solution for Emma. And Jefferson's like, why should I help you? And she says, well, I can reunite you with your daughter and I can bring back her memories. And he's like, absolutely not. The pain yep. of living with two sets of memories is absolutely not something I would wish on my daughter. I just want yep. a new start. I want a Imagine new start. Imagine how fucked up that would be to be a 10-year-old-ish, assuming that's how right. old is. And be like, well, I have these parents that I love. But also I remember also, this loving father I once had. Right. So, I appreciate that Jefferson's like, abso fucking lutely not. I am a good father and would never. Yeah, and so, like, he's like, I want a new start. Like, one where we have been together. This is just our new world. Like, right. I'm not wishing a new set of memories on her. Like, right. I don't want her to know everything. I just, I want to be together. Yeah. Which I appreciate. Regina agrees, and but only once Emma has been taken care of. Ooh, that's fun. Back in the Enchanted Forest, we see the launch of an attack on the no. castle. Um, Wolf Red howls out a signal. No. no. She can just do this on... It is a full moon. I will... It's wolf time. It wolf is month. wolf time. Wolf season. <laughs> I don't know what it's called anymore. Wolf times, which does absolutely sound like I don't. You know how like some people refer to that time of the month as like Shark Week. Yep. I think Wolf Times is where I'm headed. Yep, it's Wolf Times. Everyone. Wolf Red howls the signal. They launch this attack. The fairies fly in because the air assault is being handled by the fairies. A lot of fairies. Right. Snow and the dwarves all scale the walls of the castle. They're attacking the guards. They get into this castle. Beautiful. They kind of clear out the courtyard, and they're feeling very triumphant, and all of a sudden they're surrounded by a bunch of knights and are realizing that they're outnumbered. But then, of course, the fairies come, and they pixie dust them and right. make them fall asleep. It's it it's still upsetting. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a choice. Meanwhile, back in Storybrook, Henry rushes to see August and tell him about Emma and how she's planning to leave. Right, right. August says he tried to make Emma believe, but because she doesn't, she will never see that any of this is real. He she can't see him turning to wood. He can't make her believe because right. she just doesn't want to see it. Sure. Now he's paying the price. His arm is now turning to wood. Oh, no. Soon it will be hard for him to breathe because, you know, his lungs oh, will baby. be turning to wood. Oh, that sounds and like a Henry rough time. And Henry realizes, oh, you're Pinocchio. <laughs> Smart kid, I believe, is the response. <laughs> He's like, but in your story, you should be real. And he's like, I'm turning back because I was not a very good little lad. Like, <laughs> not a good boy. 
I was not a good boy. I was not a very brave little lad. And <laughs> he's lied and stuff, so he's turning back to wood. Well. Again, it's getting harder for him. He is, like, he's dying. All he wants right. is to spend his last t- bit of time with Marco, his dad. Why not? He says, I'm out of Operation Cobra. It is up to you. I can. I'm in pain. <laughs> Abedan's a small child. Go save the savior. Go save your mom. It's fine. We flash over to uh, Granny's where Emma and Archie are having some sort of meeting. Where essentially Archie is saying... You do not have a case for custody of Henry. No. Which is correct. He lists, basically lists like, hey, ever since you've showed up, this little fucker has gotten into trouble. He's stealing credit cards, skipping mm-hmm. school. Um, He's put himself in steal- danger. danger. He's mm-hmm. been stealing. And, and she's like, none he's happier, the- right? And he's like, ah! <laughs> right. And he's like, None of the allegations you are making about Regina, that she's evil, that she is doing all these sh- this shady shit, none of that can be proven. None of that is true right. in the eyes of the law. And in the eyes of the law, you got here and all of this stuff started happening right. with this child. You do right. not look like a good influence. And I, Correct. I would say it would probably be a different thing if she had been living with Henry the whole time and, like, right. you know, had been raising him, something like that. Then she might have a leg to stand on if it was, like, a different challenge. Right. But you've not but... been around this kid. No. You adopted him out. Yep. You gave him up. You gave him to a parent who, by all looks, all images, everything to the outside seems to be entirely stable, committed, oh, yeah. loving, maybe a little strict, but nothing over right. the top. Right. And at one point, she even is like, well, like, do you think she would ever hurt him? And he was like, oh. no. Right, and... Never, he, he, she would never hurt him. Right, he only hurts so. others. Right. He does say, like, I don't know why he adds that. It's not going to make Emma feel better. He'd be like, oh, other people, sure. Henry, no. Yeah. He's like, absolutely. Regina is scary and would absolutely hurt others, but she will never hurt her son. Which, again... It's correct. Correct. She would never hurt her son. They don't caveat it on purpose, but... By the end of the episode, we understand yes. it to be on purpose. Yes. She would never Perhaps hurt the hurt show doesn't on understand purpose. it to hurt mean on purpose <sighs> for a while. But we understand it to mean on purpose. She loves her son so much. I don't want to ever argue that fact. No. She loves that boy. And I'm so glad eventually they understand that. Right. Our Emma basically is like, Archie, you are implying that Henry is better off with Regina. And he's kind of like, well, kind of. It's not going to ever hurt Henry. So, like, she's not worse off. Like, right. I don't know. He tells Emma, hey, if this is ever going to work, if you're ever going to, like, work as a cohesive family Mm -hmm. unit you need to stop this war between you two like right you guys need to stop because all you are doing is hurting henry again rightfully so one of the few moments i'm like yep archie is entirely correct and we don't have many of those weird that she's going to him for like legality advice the man's a therapist Right. Well, and not that he wouldn't be called on, because he absolutely would be called on in a court of law in a custody battle. But, also weird. Yeah. Again, it does feel like it would be crossing a weird... Now, this is a very real line, not a TV line, but, like, it does feel like it would be a weird line to cross 
to go to your child's therapist and be like, right. do I have a chance at custody? Maybe don't do that. I and don't I know. feel like they couldn't answer. <laughs> like, legally, I feel like they probably would not be able to answer because right. it would be releasing too much of another parent's. I mean, to be fair, he literally was like, you want his files? Take his files. <laughs> We're back in the Enchanted Forest. Oh, thank God. Snow races to the cell where Charming is supposed to be, but, oh no. It's a mirror. He's an illusion what? in a mirror. He basically is like, the queen took me prisoner. This is terrible. Right. I like that she walks into the jail cell and is like, it's a mirror. Yeah, babes, it's also a trap. <laughs> Snow is right. Yeah, no, like the the next step should have been get out. But she's very emotional and she stares at his face in the mirror and they put their hands up to the mirror and they they, they mirror touch each other and <laughs> snow yep. is very very tearfully like we are never going to be together like this is going to how, be our life forever i don't like this i don't how think many we can times survive do we have this. to find each other a lot babes get used so to it. so many more it's your entire is, life uh-huh charming however still has faith he's like we will always find each other Ugh, and she's like gross. i'm so tired of finding you and she, he's like but we will always find each other i promise you and then I the queen say, appears in the mirror and is like eh. hey i was worried i was gonna have to like clean tongue marks off the mirror so we're gonna not do that anymore <laughs> we're done with this moment thank you <laughs> that's enough but hey you want this to end you come meet me. You come meet me alone. You come meet me unarmed. That seems like a good idea. Snow says, where? And she <laughs> says, the place where it all began. God, what a dramatic bitch. We love a dramatic asshole. <laughs> Obviously, her friends are like, do not do this. No. Grumpy has a weird line because, like, yeah. Snow is stripping her weapons and then... Grumpy says, I wrote it down because it was upsetting to me. Grumpy says, keep the little knife between your tuffets. <laughs> what? Like, our que okay. okay. Question mm -hmm. for ye listeners. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Lo and I had very different ideas of what tuffet was. I went to Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet, so I'm going... The dagger is between her butt cheeks. I can only assume. There's no good way of, there's no delicate way of, of saying this. Once you brought up the rhyme, it did seem very ass cheekish. However, she did seem to be stripping things from her upper body. So my interpretation was tuffets, tuffets were meant to be her boobs. Yeah. That she kept so a little dagger between her boobs. So you tell us, what do you think? What do you think the tuffets are? Ass cheeks or boobs? <laughs> if you're a tuffets guy, what are you into? <laughs> Butts oh, or boobs? No. That's... Well. <laughs> it was a weird line, okay? Someone absolutely thought they were entirely too clever for thinking of it, and it was weird. And that's all <laughs> I'm going to say about it. Is like, I will be removing the knife between my tuffets. <laughs> Listen, it sounds like a dangerous spot to keep anything sharp. Either way, no matter which way you go Honestly, on the I would spectrum rather here. keep the dagger between the upper tuffets. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like there's more to protect me from harm there. Like, I am built to. Right. <laughs> To protect that area. My ribs and my sternum are meant to, like, keep me safe. Right. The ass doesn't have much yeah, like... by way of protection. It's, it's, <laughs> there's not much happening. <laughs> We're all getting very comfortable with each other. <laughs> I feel God in this chilies tonight. Um, Alright. Against her friend's wishes, she's like, 
leaving all daggers, including the Tuffet ones. And I'm going to meet Regina alone, unarmed. That's what I said I was going to do. I'm going to follow through. Right. It is best that I end this before anybody else gets hurt. I'm going to go take care of this. Sure. No, logical. We're back in Storybrooke. We're going to flash back over there. Regina brings Jefferson down into her heart vault. The only remaining magic in the storybook is basically being carried over in like little things that she brought over. So her belongings right. from the Enchanted Forest are full of magic. And she dumps a box of like trinkets into his hat and he's like, no, no, they disappeared, but it wasn't enough magic. Right. There's not enough here to create a portal. No. I need something need more, more magic. powerful. So Regina pulls from her pocket the ring that Daniel gave her. Mm -hmm. And this is a very emotional scene, so I'm going to go through it before we discuss what this ring does. Right. Obviously, this is, like, her most sentimental keepsake. This is the ring oh, sure. he was going to give her to marry her. Like, this is an important ring. It is the only thing she has that has enough magic. She tosses it into... She basically hesitates, and Jefferson mm -hmm. says, like, is your revenge worth it? Like, fucking get it together, ma'am. If you want your revenge, this is what you do. You need to do it. So she drops the ring into the hat, it disappears, and it creates a very small amount of magic. It's not enough magic to create a full portal, but it is mm -hmm. enough that Jefferson says, you can direct me to a time and a place, and I can bring over one object, basically. I don't like the time piece of that Yeah, that statement. is weird. I don't have any, like, thoughts on it other than I guess we can just pop in different spaces and timelines which we know we can from later seasons but i just don't like it it is weird it is a weird introduction to this season because currently it seems like portals Everything only is... work in a concurrent fashion right they can only send you to the real world at that exact moment so right it's weird why not jefferson says direct the hat to where you want it to go and regina says i know what i want i want to bring back an apple which is you know would be a weird statement if we didn't know what she was talking no. about we didn't know, we didn't know she was the evil queen that'd be a really weird thing to say yeah now i do want to point out that um yeah t talk the, us through this a little bit the ring <laughs> in order to like make us make the connection that this is the ring that daniel gave us Gave us. Not Regina. Yes. Gave us. As a nope. viewer. Of course, we are all, I assume, identifying with Regina <laughs> at this point. Mm hmm Right? Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. If in, not, you're wrong. Correct. In order to make us very clear that this is the ring that Daniel gave Regina, there's like a little hologram in the middle of it that like flashes no. Daniel's face. I, no. It's just a weird choice. Like, it could have been an inscription on the inside of the ring. No. It could have been her saying out loud, like... Daniel, I'm so I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Daniel. Like, it could have been anything except this weird little holographic ring. Right. But... But we, we went with it. That's where they went, so... Good for them. Holographic ring has been destroyed. It is in the Oh, hat. sad. In the Enchanted Forest, Snow and the Queen meet in the stables where we know that Daniel was killed. Right. Regina Fun. says, walk with me. Snow says, so okay. Wonderful. They walk up the hill and Snow looks around and says, my God, like it's the same. It looks exactly the same. And <laughs> Regina says, well, Does this it? is new. <laughs> This giant headstone that you almost tripped over is new. <laughs> she's like, what is that? And she's like, yeah, it's a grave. That's a headstone, you dumb, dumb shit. <laughs> Why is Snow the dumbest smart person? I mean, really, like, 
the step down in intellect that went from planning a castle invasion to what's that giant stone on the ground that is raised and clearly has an inscription on it. Sure. Snow realizes because she did not know. Important. I think you should write it down. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I shall indeed. Daniel died. Daniel was killed because Snow did not keep her secret. She did Good to not know. know this. Fascinating. Regina, Can't wait to hear as more about we this. saw in the stable boy, hit it very well. She did not. Right. She did not share that no. Daniel had been killed. She basically said, we wanted different things. My mother was correct. I want to marry your father. To Snow. Right. And in the intervening years has played it very close to the vest where she didn't like her, but... It's the long con of it all. She had a plan that was going to take at least ten years, if not more. Right. And so Regina's like, stare at the man of the... or at the grave of the man you killed. (laughs) Do it. Look. Look Look at at it. And... Snow like, is it's like, like when people take their dog and they're like, you peed, I'm going to rub your nose in it. <laughs> a That's little what bit. <laughs> a little bit. And Snow is like, but you killed my father. <laughs> and <laughs> Fuck right off. Regina's like, yeah, you still killed my boyfriend. Who you I love killed more him than- first. Yeah, he died first. I wouldn't have killed your dad had you not killed him. Wouldn't have been anywhere him. near your dad if you hadn't killed my boyfriend. <laughs> And Snow is like, but you killed my father, and I lost my mother, and haven't we both suffered enough? And she's like, no. Stone-faced, no. No. We have not. You have not suffered enough. I will be continuing my revenge with you. You have not suffered to my liking. I like that she's very clear with her expectations of how much suffering Snow must go through. We love we love a leader that says, here's what my expectations are of you. Exactly. <laughs> then Regina pulls out the apple. Ah. Good. And Snow is like, it's an apple. And she's like, yeah. no, I'm not going to kill you. Not, she's like, kill me. And she's like, no, I'm not going to kill mm-hmm. you. This, with a bite of this apple, your body will be your tomb. An upsetting thing to hear. Yeah, it, basically, I suppose it's like, you will be turning 30. Your body will now be your tomb. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No, not not for you to worry about. No. She's None of your like, concern. She's just like, no. You take a bite of the apple, and... You won't die, but you sure will be miserable all alone in your head. And you will nobody to wake you. That up. implies that she's going to be fully brain activity awake. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which is 100% why she's like, we will be going with this plan and not the kill her plan. Because you kill her, no brain activity. Can't suffer. Once you lose the brain function, no suffering. Right. That you know what? So, she thought ahead. She did. She is a she is a goal oriented queen. Yes. So she says, take a bite of the <laughs> apple. And so I was like, Do it. No. <laughs> I'm not going to. And she's like, You have to take a bite. And you have to take a bite willingly, otherwise it doesn't work. And so I was like, Good to know. Great. I'm not willing. And she's like, Oh, but you are. Because huh, you try take a again. bite of this apple, or I kill your charming. Choice is yours. Take Baby, the bite. Do what you want. Don't take the bite. Someone's dying. Mm-hmm. Or not dying. So Snow realizes this is never going to end. She's not willing to kill Charming over it. She bites the apple. Ah. She took the bite. She takes the, the, bait, bite. the bite. She falls unconscious to the ground. 
Charming feels a stab of pain because I guess soulmates can feel pain in this universe. Good. Or something. And he's like, what did you do to her? To the empty air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Snow falls to the ground and her arm falls out and obviously her fingers are loose because now she's unconscious. The apple well, rolls sure. out of her hand, down the hill, and into the portal that Jefferson had created Why not? earlier. Falls out of the portal and into his hand. So, you know. In Storybrooke, he well, hands it to Regina says, is this what we were looking for? And she says, yes. I want to know the mechanics. Mm -hmm. If she has to say, okay, I need you to be about mm, eight feet away from where I'm standing in this grove by this grave at this the time. The physics this on point. this woman, the way that she knew where to do <laughs> She's been thinking of this moment for a long time. Down this hill. Yeah. She's like, we were on a hill. Okay. Well, to be fair, that, that was probably Would the happiest she had been. have fallen down the eastern side of the hill. <laughs> And it was a Tuesday, so remember. <laughs> like, to be fair, that's probably the happiest she has been since Daniel died. So she replays oh, yeah. that memory yeah. frequently. Yeah, no, she... for sure. She's like, okay. She, I would say, you know what? Because it does seem like the, the portal has, it can't get big, but it has some staying power. So it would be like, okay, sweep this side of the hill at this time. Like. And just it's specific, right? You know what? Good honor. She was like the yep. geographic coordinates of this apple will be yep. at this time. Go. Be gone. Off with you. Or someone drops an apple on you. And then she says something so. Placed with innuendo. Oh, oh, I had forgotten. I, I had forgotten until this very moment. But Jefferson hands her the apple and is like, did you want this? And mm. she says, yes, I wanted this. And then she says, <sighs> and now to, I need to figure out how to get the savior to taste my forbidden fruit. <laughs> Which... Is perhaps the most queer baby sentence I've ever yeah. heard in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. It's not great. <laughs> it, it, the only solace I can have for myself is if this show were being rewritten today, 2022. Oh, they'd be together. Yes. Or that line, lines like that would not exist. Yeah. And I'm going to say, if, if you reboot this in 2025 or whatever... And I'm Regina end up together, right? Like, oh, absolutely. That's the, that's the... That's what we're going for. I mean, of course, unless you're bringing back Lana Perea and Sean McGuire, in which oh. case, Regina and Robin will end up together. I will fight oh, you on this. Correct. Correct. But in any other version, Regina and Emma end up together, right? Like, that's the... Feels like the... The trajectory? I would agree. Sort of? Not my ship, but, like... Sure, I know uh, things like were this clear, make it... queer baited. That is what yes. I will say. Hundred percent. Yep. No, yep. there's no beating around the bush with it. There's no like, well, it could be no. I'm Get sorry. Get her to taste my forbidden fruit. There is nothing heterosexual about that sentence. N not even a single word. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Leaving that sentence behind, uh huh. Regina is in her house trying to brainstorm ideas to get Emma to taste her forbidden fruit. Her idea is, I'm going to bake the, I'm going to bake the apple into a turnover. What a, a single choice. turnover, not into I multiple. Into one single big turnover that takes up the whole baking sheet. It will not be hidden amongst anything. It will be this not one singular treat that make I have prepared. Make a bunch of miniature ones. Make, like, make hand pies. Especially given what we see later about the potency <laughs> of the poison. And what we see later about, I made one for myself. Do you want to take this with you? Truly. Like, just 
Anyway, she is baking. The doorbell rings. She goes to the door. It is Emma. Emma oh, how says, we need to talk. Emma's, and Regina says, well, sure seems we do. Okay, come on in. My favorite is we go in and Emma kind of stares around and <laughs> Regina is like, so you wanted to talk to me? You came here. Yeah, like, speak. What'd you want to say? And Emma says, I'm going to leave. But I'm leaving on the condition that I can come back and see Henry any time I feel like it. Right. Seems like a very bold request. I am leaving. And I will leave. And I'll leave your life. But I am going to come back. And Regina says, but he's still my son. And Emma says, yes, he is still your son. Okay. So Regina thinks about this for a minute and then is like, please accompany me into the t- kitchen, if you will. I think there's like a ding. Like we hear like yes. the oven ding or something. Yes. There is a there is the sound of the timer going off in the kitchen, but she does have a very weird request of like, it's not just like, hey, I, I need, need to, to get take that. care of this. You, you can follow come me, on me. We can keep talking. Yeah. Right. Like, come on. I need to get that. It's like very much like. If you wouldn't mind accompanying me into thy kitchen. Like, very weird. That's fair. Just very formally phrased. They go into the kitchen. You know how you talk to your enemy. (laughs) Regina pulls out the turnover and puts it on the counter. She uses a dish towel. She does. Not an oven mitt. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. This woman is chaotic. Emma basically says again, like, I will leave. You will have your son. War will end. We're not going to fight each other anymore. I will get out of here, though. And Regina says, okay. Well, she doesn't really say anything. She makes a lot of faces in this conversation, which I do feel is important and think you should write down. Yes, write down faces. Right, yes, just the word faces. (laughs) She really does not commit to much and she doesn't no. say much of anything but she no. makes faces as Emma says I will leave and you will have your son yeah there is there are no words in the very important very few verbal communications yes. in that conversation from Regina's side but Emma leaves under the impression that like hey I will, I'm going to clear out, and then in a while I can come back and see my son, and then, you know, try again, or whatever. And Regina says, hey, we have to be cordial, so here, take this Mm. turnover, the singular turnover that I've made, and... Seemingly for myself, the one that you can assume I've made for myself. Right, please take it for the road. I'm going to put it in Tupperware and you take it for the road. And that's not suspicious, and Emma says, great. Back in the Enchanted Forest, Snow's friends all find her un- unconscious body. It's wild to me that the wolves are the last one to find her because they go to the stable first and are like, she was, she's here, around. she's here. And then Grumpy's like, up here! She's over here. <laughs> you idiots, she's out here. So they're all upset and they're like, well, maybe she's sleeping and Red puts a dagger under her nose and it doesn't fog Texas up so there's no, no breath. She's Rats. dead, according to them. Well, sure. And then the evil queen is watching from her mirror room where she is essentially flipping through the channel <laughs> and watching she's, the misery. She's definitely doing the thing where it's like, well, that's on commercial break. I've already seen this scene or I'm bored of that. Like, it's ADHD brain of I will be, like, watching five things simultaneously. Yeah, no. And she's absolutely, like, she watches them cry for a little bit and then switches I wish, the channel and it's charming. She, and he's like, no, Snow. I wish she had, I just wish she had popcorn in front of her. Like, something Truly. she was eating. Yes, just, like, something she could pop in her mouth as, like. Yeah. An apple slice. That would have been really funny. That would have been very funny. Absolutely. And then you would have gotten the crisp little crunch. Yeah. 
of like I just think we just we needed that. Yeah, absolutely. Good idea. Someone write Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> and that's all we do in Storybook. We're or in in the Enchanted Forest. Good. We're back in Storybook. Of course we are. Regina goes to gloat in Gold's shop, and is like, "Ha ha! The curse is." never weakening i have won well sure you are going to stay here where you belong ha 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 and he goes i don't need to remind you all magic comes with a price and she's like well you can pay it and he's like I yeah that's not fuck. how magic works so <laughs> fine i guess henry goes to see emma at mary margaret's apartment as she's packing, and he asks right. if everything's okay, and she says, "I'm leaving, but I will come back. I will visit you. I promise." And he is like completely distraught. He's like, "How can you trust Regina? How can Mom, you like, no. a- think she's even telling the truth?" And he says, "You don't believe in the curse. Like, you yeah. really not believe this in is- this curse." Y- Lo pointed this out. This is some really incredible acting from J-Mo. And it's sad that it's a scene paired with Jared Gilmore. That is not a slight on him. It's because he's a child and she is an adult actress who's been acting for a very, very, very long time. She is eating the scenery around him and probably should have brought it down (laughs) because her reactions are so intense. And they're not matching the energy he's Mm -hmm. given her. And he's the 10-year-old. So... Right. But it's, she has some really good lines of just like, it, right? It's very no, it's, emotional and very heavy. But again, Jared Gilmore, Henry's just kind of staring at her deadpan. Right, and so she's getting really upset at him when he's not upset. So yes. it's it it is an odd scene. Like it feels unbalanced, and either yes. Henry needed to be more upset or she needed to bring it back a little and rein it in a little bit so that yeah. like. It was more like she's very upset about the idea that he's still, still believing in can... this curse, but she's trying to hold it in because he's not upset. Because well, he's gives... not yelling at her, and she is in yelling the... at him. And in the context of this scene, she's trying to convince him it's going to be okay if I leave. So right. her making her acting emotional in response to him is not going to assure him that it will be fine right and so it it, it's a weird scene only because the actor's energies are so much mismatched Mm -hmm. like if jared gilmore had been as he will in future episodes been yelling at her and has in past episodes been yelling at her then it would have felt like her emotional right reaction to it and the yelling back is kind of justified even if like obviously please don't yell at children but like right and, and it's imp- like i don't think it's supposed to be that she's yelling at she's doing the emotional i'm crying and i'm right. raising my voice but since he's not reacting it comes off as i'm just yelling i'm at yelling you. at you because he's she's going, down to his face level you don't believe in the curse and she goes stop believing in curses and he's like she's like down on okay. his level she has yeah. dropped to her knees and is eye and to eye with begging him, him which sobbing weeping again into his good face acting Except he's not returning it. And then as the adult in the scene, she should be the one going, okay, let's match this energy. And who knows how yeah. these things were intercut. Maybe the cuts right. from her were ones where he was yelling back at her. And right. then they were using his cuts. Right. Where he was less. So could also who knows be how editing. It's... But if it, it's the weirdly final product put together. Is weird. It's yes. weirdly put together just because of how unemotional he seems to be and how emotional she is right. getting. Correct. Either way, she is like, please stop believing in the, all of this stuff. And he is no. like, no. Also, where'd you get that turnover? <laughs> He's back with his, like, 100-100 eagle eye vision. Truly, because he's like, you're the savior. You have to save everybody. And she's like, I do not want to save everybody. I want to save you. Yep. It's just, it's so, like, it, it's more spaced out than this. But it reads very much of, like, you can't leave, you can't leave. What's that? Pretty much. You yeah. can't leave, you can't leave me. Where, who gave you that turnover? What, 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 where is this? Yeah, what's, what's, what's that pastry? Why do you have a pastry, <laughs> Emma? 
<laughs> You've never like, baked a day in your life, which is Regina correct. gave it to me for the road, and he's like, "Don't eat that. That's poison." And she is like, "No, it's not." What are you talking about? Of course it's not. Why would she poison me? I'm leaving. And she, I talked to her, and and I used she's my being superpowers. Honest. She's being y'all know honest. I'm going to say jack shit right now because y'all know what's coming later. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Henry continues to insist it's poison, and she just says over and over again, no, it's not. It's, come on. Yeah. Get it together, Junior. Why would she poison me? I am leaving. I've agreed to leave. And Henry She's getting says, what she wants. You are always going to be a threat. That is why. Right. He grabs the turnover. And unlike the apple from bitch. earlier in the season where he just kind of yeets it over his shoulder and is like, don't, don't eat, eat that. that. <laughs> he says, I don't want to do this, basically, but if I must, I must, and takes a bite of the turnover. This is the only way to get you to believe. This Fuck is what me, I do. Guess. Takes a bite of the turnover, is like standing, and Emma's like, you want some okay. ice cream with that? <laughs> and then he immediately collapses onto the floor. The turnover drops out of his hand in a mirror of the scene where the apple drops out of Snow's yes. hand. And that is where we end. Henry oh. is now under whatever apple curse. Regina. A sleeping curse. Don't worry, this will come up in future seasons. Oh, what happens if you've had a sleeping curse and then are... Save from it. Of course, yes. Of course, the red room. Um, it's only important sometimes when we need it to exist. It exists and then never again. Right. Uh, and that's where we leave it. That's the episode. Good God. Yeah, it's a whole uh, thing. Good Good on you. That was some good summarizing. Thank you. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. It was a hell of a lot. Um... Okay. I have thoughts. I'm sure you... I know you do as well. Yes. I I would like to spend a minute on the... We've talked about this before, but it's worth another chat. Uh Uh-huh. King George, James, the David, the thing. (laughs) The whole thing. Uh Uh-huh. So first things first. It's again important to me that everyone remembers King George has said, if you do not marry Abigail... I will kill your mother. Right. Yep. I remember that threat. It was very important. It was very important. It was the only reason, because he was like, you can kill me. And he was like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I will kill your mom. Right. Which, again, way more of, one would think, a way to keep him in line. Correct. And yet, again, we've addressed this. (laughs) Immediately, he's like, fuck you, mom. (laughs) Yeah, fuck my mom. I'm out. Right. And the interesting thing is... That King George seems to have also forgotten this threat. <laughs> That's so true. He's he like, I've the... captured you. Behead him. And that comes to my, that brings me to point number two. Mm-hmm. At this point, David is pretending to be James, right. his beloved son, whom he loves so much and everyone knows is King George's son. Right. This is a public beheading. <laughs> Yeah. Everyone there thinks he's just going to murder his son. Yeah, yeah. Or he has come clean him and like and is like, no, no. I'm you see, murder actually, this random peasant. So here's the thing: I was impotent. You see. <laughs> Somehow I don't see King George as the person who is like, I was impotent once upon a time, and most of the time. <laughs> Precisely. So there's that piece that's a little like, huh. Second mm-hmm. thing is, the whole reason he was like, I need a prince to marry the kingdoms and to be my pride and joy, to be my champion. He needs someone to do these things. Right. There are no other, there's not a third. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> I had to stop talking because I was like, wait, there could be. I don't know. <laughs> as far as he knows, there is not a third. Right, you don't know. There could be one in Candyland for all we goddamn know. But for fuck's sake, 
I'm surprised we never got Candyland, and it's only because you know Hasbro owns that. Well, we did get the candy or candy killer. Oh, so of course. I feel like we were on our way there. <laughs> but it's interesting to me that this idiot king's whole plan is now hinging on, I'm going to kill the mm-hmm. lookalike to my son mm-hmm. publicly. Right. And that question mark, question mark, question mark, profit? <laughs> Truly. Truly, if you kill, it is bonkers. If you kill David, you officially have no means. Right, you have no heir <laughs> to your I throne. Can't... And I... you can't even, because you've publicly beheaded him, you can't right. even be like, tragically, my son has passed away. And that's the thing. There's so many angles he could play with. He could do the whole, you know, my son, heroic as he is, was betrothed. And her, he saved his fiance's right true love. One and would think Abigail could like be nice her to father. Midas. <laughs> right, like, hey, Dad, my boyfriend is no longer made of gold. Can you help out my fiance that I'm not going to marry anymore because he helped me save him? Right. Thanks. Like reward, give them the reward money because he saved the love of my life, and I want to be married to. Right. Or like, I don't know, just be like, hey. Right. Or go back to your original plan and say, David, if you don't do this, your mother is going mm-hmm. to die. Right. Yeah, no, it, this is a bonkers turn. This is this is a bonkers it, turn in his there plan. There is n- no thoughts head empty. Oh, 100%. And, that's really all I have on that. I just don't understand what his point. Like what? What? Well, yeah, no, I don't get his plan. He says I want you to suffer, and he's saying that to everyone. Out everyone's loud? like, "Shit, he hates his son. Damn, right. what his son ever do to him?" <laughs> he sure only seemed to have run away from a wedding, maybe. Yikes. Or at some point, is it just public knowledge of, oh, that's not his actual son? I don't know. Did he, like, <laughs> denounce him first? He's like, this is not and, my son. Okay. I will be Oh, God. Him. Now this is, now I'm getting into weird lore. Because if David, if Charming is going to marry Snow, they married, they had a very public wedding. Right. Do you think people in King George's kingdom were like, fuck? That's our dude. Wait. <laughs> James. Wait. What? Wait, but his name is David. Beautiful. I don't. So know. that's it. That's all I have there. I have no answers, just questions. Speaking of no answers, just questions. Um, Lay it on me. Okay. Because we're gonna we're just gonna continue on that theme of because I would argue again. I think the writers. We're probably writing from a, here is a scene I want. Mm-hmm. I will do anything I need to get me there. Right. And they don't really think about the implications for the lore or for no. the... They are like, no thoughts head empty. Correct. Because, again, I think they wanted... I think they wrote from, we want him in a guillotine that turns into water. So water dumps on his head. Right. How do we get to that scene? And this is, that's what they came up with. Regina, George, public beheading. Right. <laughs> Regina, George. <laughs> oh, no. Good. Oh, maybe that's what we'll do during our hiatus. Drop some of our sweet tracks. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, watch Mean Girls. <laughs> I mean that, too. Ah, beautiful. We've written whole songs about this show. Just a little teaser for you. That's Almost not a lie. Joke. This is a... <laughs> <laughs> it is both true and false. In we which... have taken songs that exist and changed the lyrics fully to emulate and encapsulate the show. Except we have not done it all the way through the song. So they are not full songs. No. No. We have one full song. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have one Hello... full song. Hello, Charming. Hello, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know where the lyrics are for, but we did finish it. I have it and somewhere. One... Thank God. I absolutely have it somewhere. Um, Okay. So back on the on the things that I don't think they meant to create a plot hole, but kind of create a plot hole. 
Okay. And this is entirely pedantic. I don't think I caught this the first time through. This is the first time I even thought about it. So again, this is a nitpicky detail. We never nitpick. What are you talking about? No, I've never nitpicked. But I've never screamed about the artwork in the storybook. No. In the scene where Ruby asks Snow, like, why the hell does the queen hate you so much? Let me know. You're supposed to I'm supposed to be your best friend. Right. I've been helping you out for like a year now. Just tell me. Ruby says, you know, hey, what the hell? Snow says, so valid. I took her happiness and now she wants to take mine. Right. Okay. A throwaway line, essentially, we know it to be true. We know what she's referring to. We know she is referring to the fact that she told the secret to Cora. Right. Daniel was killed because of this. Fantastic. That set Regina on her path of revenge. That is why she is doing all of this I, to Snow White. As viewers, I ruined we her, happiness. I I ruined her happiness. I ruined her happiness. Mm-hmm. However, <sighs> later in this exact same episode, and I would not have gotten on to this, except it was the exact same episode. Right. Regina takes Snow to Daniel's grave. Right. She reveals that Daniel was killed. This is after that conversation. Right. This is in the timeline. She has talked to Ruby. She sees the trap. She sees David in the mirror and says, okay, Regina, I'll meet you here. Right. So that's how we've ended up here. At no point in that conversation, because Snow very much does not know that Daniel was killed. When right. she had the conversation right after Daniel was killed, where Gina gets angry, she turns around, she does, has her like evil queen moment, and then turns back around and has a wonderful acting moment where she is very much playing it off as, you know, my mother spoke sense into me. Right. I didn't know what I wanted this is what I want. I want to be your stepmom. I want to marry your dad. Right. Ostensibly, that whole charade lasts up till she kills Snow's dad. Right. Till she has the genie kill Snow's dad. In which case, then, yes, absolutely, we could probably have a conversation about, like, I wish we had seen it. I wish we had right. seen a conversation of them talking before Snow went on the run of like. Right. At that point, I feel like there's a conversation of, hey. Everything you, you are that I'm about to do to you, you deserve. Right. But this and, is very clearly the first time that Snow is realizing not only what. Is she unhappy? Because I feel like what they're trying to get out is Snow thinks that she just told a secret and... That pissed her off? Yeah. But... Right. It's given but the I, weight I like... of, I got her boyfriend murdered. I but she like doesn't you know, know that until this moment where she sees and, the grave. And it's weird if she does think it's just, I told a lie and pissed her off. and be like, hey, I told a lie then you killed my dad and those seem like very <laughs> unequally weighted crimes right but then not told a lie i told your secret i should say that's yeah. it i spilled a secret on accident because i was 10 you killed my father these two I don't things think you're as okay. these don't line up i don't no. think you're as okay with this secret telling as you said you were right it's just it's weird because it's in the same episode where they say i destroyed her happiness but then it's revealed she doesn't know how she destroyed no regina's she is happiness clueless she does not know that daniel died if she understood in that conversation with ruby i am the reason that her love died that conversation, conversation makes a entirely different 
amount of sense because it's like right i don't want to be dead i don't want her to get revenge on me but i see where she's coming from because right. like because of me her I, life got a little bit fucked right like the love of her life is dead now she does not know that no no so to her At she's least- like i told a secret Question mark, Whoops. question mark, question mark. Murder. Murder. <laughs> the worst <laughs> kind of profit. So, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I don't understand what... Again, another thing where I'm like, you did not think that through. No. You didn't think not about the timeline no. of your episode. You did not think how those two things get put there, together. Even if she had just told Ruby, I'll be honest, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. She hates me. I don't know why. Hell, fucking stick with. It would have been almost I'm more prettier than her. Than have even have that reveal right. of like I honestly have no clue. I do not know, but I know she has it out for me. Right. Right. Like I don't know why, but she hates me. And then to have the reveal of, hello, you murdered my boyfriend. Right? Like, that would have been a good character moment. Because, again, it's kind of one of those things where I'm like, not that I'm full eye for an eye or anything. No. But she's like, I got your boyfriend killed. You got my dad yeah. killed. Aren't we even? Right. Where it's kind of like, I mean, yeah, but no. Because... Quite frankly, your dad was not great from what we saw. He was questionable at best, at best, babes. Oh, 100%. Like, just decided he's going to marry a girl and was like, you will marry me. And she was like, I don't want to. And he's like, I'm going to read your diary and get very offended. Right. Also, you know, I'm going to be offended that you have feelings for another man, even though, again... You never wanted to marry me in the first place. So. Right. I, I, part of it is they just can't decide on who Leopold was and what kind of person he was. And they don't have the, they don't have the guts and the gumption to no. dig into him being a good father, but a bad person. Yeah. And a, again, a better show with less characters to attend to probably could have done that a little better where it was like snow's memory of him is correct because he was a good father he was a good dad to her but also regina's memory of him as you know controlling as rude as all of these things is also correct because he was a bad person outside of being a dad right that could have been very interesting but again that is you need time for that. And in an ensemble it's, piece like this, you happen. don't have time for that. But they wanted to do it. And so it makes everything muddy. Because it's like, was he a good guy? Was he a bad guy? I don't know. We will never know. They keep will telling never me get he that was answer. good. They keep telling me he was good. Snow keeps saying, and I'm supposed to believe Snow, that he was right. good. And yet. And then every time he is on my screen... He is bullying Cora. He's not listening to her after she's been, you know, lied to and causes a bunch of trauma in the Mills family. Then he goes and marries her daughter. By the way, (laughs) by the way, I wish you hadn't just said that. (laughs) Just as a, as a reminder. As a treat for everyone. <laughs> As a reminder, Jesus we're not get, we're not there yet. It's not going on any sort of fur, uh, no. fern or treat mm. or anything. But I just do need to like make mention of the fact that that makes not one, no, but two men that both Regina and her mother have had entanglements with. I no. The first being mm. Rumpelstiltskin. Mm-mm-mm. And why do they keep doing this to us? Anyhow, 
It's just Mm -hmm. a whole thing. Anyway, it upset me Mm -hmm. simply because I'm like, you are not thinking about the repercussions of your words. (laughs) This show doesn't think. Within the confines of this one single script, I'm not even taking things. I'm not even taking things from outside of this single episode. Like three scenes away from each other. Right. Is the thing. Right. Just bonkers. Anyhow. I know you have one more thing you want to talk about. I do. We're good. This will be kind of a segue into our, our housekeeping and lists, but mm-hmm. this is one of the superpower moments where I'm not sure how to rule it. And it's I will walk weird. you all through it. It's weird. When Emma is talking to Henry at the end and Henry is like, why do you believe her? And she's like, I used my superpower. She's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Lo and I had to go back and rewatch the scene that she's referencing because there was so little conversation. We were like, what possibly yeah. could she have used her superpower on? And, and her, it, we were like, before that conversation happened, we literally mm-hmm. were talking over the episode yeah. a little bit to say, no, nothing no, was ever stated. So, like, no, nothing no, they didn't make a caught. deal. She didn't even agree, like, that sounds good. She was just like, he's still my son. And she was like, yep, I'll leave. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not even an agreement. They don't have anything. She yes. doesn't say, okay, I'll back off. I, she doesn't say, okay, that sounds good. You can trust me. Mm-hmm. She stares at Emma for a long time, and Emma stares back for a long time and kind of arches her eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Which begs the question, do I now need to be looking at nonverbal lies? I don't know. I don't. I'm upset be- for you because it was called out <laughs> as a superpower. And moment. that's why I don't know what to do. Because at first I'm like, well, she said it, so it counts. But I'm like, counts against what? What, do we, what is she using it on? What I don't line? Know. What sentence? What moment? I genuinely don't know. And I don't know. I am flabbergasted. I am still trying to figure out exactly what to do. I think for now I don't count it as anything because I do not know what the lie is or the truth is. Right. Like I'm almost there was... tempted to just leave it off entirely because right. I think we... there's no moment. We went back and scrubbed that entire scene and we were just Lo and I were sitting there going, okay She doesn't there is nothing... lie. There's she... no doesn't tell doesn't the truth say, either. Tr- she doesn't say anything. She's just like, Henry will still be my son. And Emma's like, yes, and I'll leave. And she gets close to her and stares at her. And Emma stares and kind of like widens her eyes and leans back. Like, right, which is very okay. clearly meant to be the moment she's using the superpower. But be like, oh, I trust her. But it's not a trust no, meter. No, it's really <laughs> upsetting because, again, it's never been phrased as, oh, it's just like a vibe reader. Right. <laughs> <laughs> say it out loud, say it fast. Um, she has a very good vibe radar. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, like it's... But that's not what it is. No, very specifically, it has been I, stated, I can tell I, when people mm-hmm. are lying to me. And Regina said nothing. She very specifically said nothing because she knows about this stupid superpower now right like the only she thing said, i can think of which was, i don't she ag- said i don't the agree. turnover is an old recipe Maybe you say new- that. <laughs> no like the only thing i can think of to like defend it because i know we at we engender pedantic pedantic viewers <laughs> which is fine we're pedantic as well so mm-hmm so I'm trying to think of the arguments. I'm trying to, th- uh, specifically, I'm trying to think of, but what if that was the unrelated nonsense argument? Right. Which I, again, it's, nope, it's all one statement. But I'm trying to think of, like, if I were at my most pedantic, most nitpicky. Mm-hmm. Right. What could I say? And the only thing I can think of it has nothing to do with the scene. It's that Emma is lying to Henry. And she okay. didn't use her superpower at all. And is trying okay. to just comfort him. But again, we're not meant to get that vibe. No, like she's... 
every time she has called it out, it is very clearly supposed to be like a right. Which would be weird if she did call it out because it's like her superpower is broken. So maybe you're onto something. Because if she did say she wasn't lying, she's telling the truth, and then clearly Regina was lying, that'd be weird. It's just so maybe you are onto something with the like. I don't know. I'm going to manipulate the child. I don't know. I wish. Then, I wish we had gotten acting choices that seemed to be more comforting to Henry. But of, again, like, but... And placating, and, like, child, like, it's going to be right. okay. I promise. Or, I used my superpower. It's fine. She what she could have done is taken the, the scene that she had with Dr. Hoffer. Take that, rework it, have her looking at Regina and saying, will you always make sure he's safe? Mm-hmm. And then she can go back, because she would be able to answer that honestly. It would not be a lie. Right. No, it's just weird, because they've specifically, and I think they did on purpose, make sure that Regina didn't lie in that scene. Right. then, on top of that, it's like, but she didn't tell the truth either. She didn't say anything. No. Like. There was so little dialogue once they walked into the kitchen, other than, Oh, the turnover is an old family recipe. Right. In, it, 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 not, it not family, have, an old recipe. If it could have been, even just promise me you won't hurt him. Like, he, promise me he's safe. And she says, he will be safe. She's not lying. Yeah. And then Emma I, could have taken that back and been like, she wasn't lying. Right. My superpower tell, told me she was telling the truth. It's just, it's such a weird moment. It is. But I think for this alone, I'm going to call it nothing. We started the episode with se- with 17 uses, 11 fails, 6 successes. We are ending it the same. If you guys watch the episode and can pinpoint a moment where you think that it is a superpower use, please let me know because I'm willing to change this count. But from my humble opinion, nothing has happened. I... I fully back you on that. I Thank you. I could not find a spot in that scene where I thought she was lying. No. Or where she not. what would be telling the truth. Yes. Like, Outright. she was making a statement of truth. Yes. At no point in that conversation was there anything stated as fact and truth or right. as a lie. It was fully exactly. just conversation yeah and things that were truthful that maybe she couldn't have clocked but there was nothing in the conversation right that she would have been thinking uh also i'm upset they didn't come up with a solution she said i'll leave and i'll see him and she said there was no deal reached (laughs) they're just making like statements i will leave okay he's still my son all right i'll see you whenever i want to Okay. Like, there is no agreement. No, they don't, yeah, and they don't even say, okay, to, I'll see him when I want to. No, it's like, it's, and they're then just going back and forth I'll see him statements. when I want to, and then Regina arches an eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. And Emma goes, yep, yeah. that's okay for me. This is good for me. Bye. Yep. It's so all that thing. to say, no uses for the superpower I'm calling it mm-hmm. now. Um, town curses, we have the one, and we have one final beam. One so. final beam. One bean. So it's one bean. How how are your things um, doing? You know, thriving as per <laughs> usual. Uh, no additions. They're thriving to the a little too tree. well, if I'm being honest. Truly, no no additions to the family tree. We know okay. everything we, we yep. found out in this episode. Essentially, no surprise family members. Oh goody. Um. I know we've already technically reached three to get Regina and Emma onto the fuck burn. <laughs> However, it's an honorable I do mention. need to honorably mention get my her to, her to taste my forbidden fruit. That's a weird moment. That's mm. I guess technically yeah. it's not mutual and we did make a big deal about the fact that it needs to be mutual. Um, but it's it is. Still, it's so innuendo. It, that's what's honorable. It's an honorable mention. That's and that's, that's why the other it's honorable. Part. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but I would like to add another strike to oh. the Jefferson and Regina that's of it fair. all, simply because she, 
She touches the moob. She does. She touches his <laughs> his his chest. And it's yeah, it's beautiful. It's weird and it's beautiful and again, I just want Lana Priya and Sebastian Stan to act in something together. Please and thank you. Like, I think just think we deserve it after two pandemic years. Yep. I, I think, think it's a good reward that. for us all. Yeah, it's as it's, a treat. It's like a reward. It is like a reward. Because they just have such good chemistry. They do. But also, they, I feel like they absolutely decided their characters had a thing, and they're playing mm-hmm. it like they had a thing. Th- yes, I would agree. So, anyhow, that's all I've got. Um, oh, that, that's not too painful then from either of us. No. That's nice. The rest of My the goodness. episode is where the pain oh, comes yeah. from. <laughs> can't believe the finale is next week. Oh my god. That's insane. Weird. It's in- insane. That this has been a bad time. Oh um, yeah. This th- there was a lot happening in this one. It has been a bad time, but I do have good it, news. What? You can only go on from here. Thank God. Wonderful. Have a great week, everybody. Yes. Make we'll sure see you to next find week. us on Apple Podcast. Leave mm-hmm. us a review. Don't forget, Red ate her boyfriend. Oh my god. And she had someone on her chin. Red ate a stranger. <laughs> Red has eaten a lot of people. This Red has eaten too many people. <laughs> Yikes. Send it will us continue to happen. An email at at uh, one wine once at at gmail. Yeah. Com or find <laughs> us on Instagram at wine, wine, and wine. God, 21 episodes. You think you'd be good at this? No, <laughs> not at all. Oh, on that note, we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>